Hey guys, welcome back. Today's viewer question is from Joe and he wants to know more about checking the fluid level in his transmission in his 98 Crown Vic. And I thought I would take this opportunity because it applies to all Panther cars. Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Town Car, Marauder, P71, P7B from 1992 to 2011. And before we get into it, I think, I think it would be a good idea to quickly review how the engine oil dipstick works because I have a feeling we all have a good understanding of that one. And uh, those two dipsticks, the transmission and the engine oil, there's in a couple of ways they're identical and in a couple of ways they're the complete and exact opposite. So this right here is what our engine oil dipstick looks like. We've got two holes that represent the minimum and maximum and then we've got a crosshatch area in the middle representing the acceptable level of fluid. And according to the owner's manual for the engine oil checking procedure, it says number one, make sure the vehicle is on level ground. Number two, turn the engine off and wait up to 15 minutes for the oil to drain into the pan and then you're ready to do your sticking and it says if the oil level is within range it's acceptable <clears throat> excuse me alright now let's take a look at our transmission dipstick uh, we've got the same two holes and we've got the same crosshatch area but instead of the crosshatch area being in between the two holes the crosshatch area is above the two holes so why is it different why is this so complicated well, I'm going to try to explain that. So, according to the owner's manual for checking transmission fluid, uh, I want to read uh, just a couple of sentences in here. So it says, before adding any fluid, make sure the correct type of fluid is used. And real quick, our Panther cars use two different types of fluid, Mercon V and Mercon LV. And I really like this chart because it shows the transmission and the model year and the easiest way to remember this is Mercon V is from 1992 to 2008 model year and Mercon LV is only the last three years 2009 through 2011 and keep in mind according to the uh, product information sheet Mercon V and LV are not interchangeable and should not be mixed. Okay, so the next uh, sentence in here it says, Your transmission does not use up fluid. However, it is recommended that you check transmission fluid at least twice a year. The fluid level should be checked if the transmission is not working properly, i.e. if the transmission sh slips or shifts slowly or you notice some side sign of fluid leakage now that sounds like uh, a pop quiz uh, question from this week and uh, I want to read the results of that community poll and if you're taking the time to uh, vote in these polls I really appreciate it so the question was uh, Ford recommends to check transmission fluid level and in 10 hours we got 100 four votes and eight people said if there are signs of fluid leakage seven people said if the transmission slips 15 people said if the transmission has shift quality issues and 74 people the majority said every six months and I'd like to beg for your forgiveness because this was a trick question and usually uh, I usually give five options and this time I left the fifth option blank and I got, I got to give a huge shout out to Daniel, Stad, Daniel Stadden and his answer was E, all of the above, because it's true. So um, shout out to Daniel for getting that one correct. And the next thing on here is it says transmission fluid should be checked at normal operating temperature of 150 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and the normal operating temperature can be reached after approximately 20 miles of driving and that's another quiz question 
and this quiz was transmission fluid normal operating temperature is and in 10 hours we got 32 votes five people got it correct 150 to 170 13 people said 170 to 190 nine people said 190 to 210 and five people said 210 to 230 and this question says transmission fluid normal operating temperature is obtained after driving and in 10 hours we got 82 votes and 33 people said 10 miles 20 people said 15 miles, 19 people said 20 miles, 3 people said 25 miles, and 7 people said 30 miles. Okay, so now uh, moving on to the uh, procedure of how to check uh, the transmission fluid level. The owner's manual says uh, of course drive the vehicle 20 miles until it reaches normal operating temperature and real quick I wanted to confirm and verify that so I went out and did a test drive and I hooked up my scan tool and I took some screenshots to see exactly uh, what the what my temperature would be after 20 miles of driving so this right here is a screenshot of my 2004 Vic I did this on April 24th, so just about a week ago. I did it at 4.30 in the morning, and ambient temperature was 46 degrees, and I started with a 24-hour cold soak in my garage, so my car and everything in it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, after five minutes of driving at 65 miles an hour on the highway, my engine coolant got all the way to 170 degrees, so that's almost operating temperature. Uh, my car is usually operated at 185 in my region. And look at the uh, transmission fluid, it's only 104 degrees. And then so I fast forwarded and I drove uh, 20, 20 miles, or no, 20 minutes at 65. And look at that, now the transmission fluid is 149 degrees. Fahrenheit, so that is uh, correct uh, to get it to 150 degrees, the bottom end of that range. So after you've got the uh, transmission fluid, the normal operating temperature, the next thing to do is to park the vehicle on a level surface and engage the parking brake. Uh, with the parking brake engaged and your foot on the brake pedal, start the engine and move the gear shift lever through all the gear ranges allowing sufficient time for each gear to engage. Number four, latch the gear shift in park and leave the engine running. And now you're ready to dip your stick. Uh, number seven, remove the dipstick and inspect the fluid level and the fluid level should be in the designated area for normal operating temperature. And if necessary, add fluid in 8 ounce increments through the filler tube until the correct level is reached. If an overfill occurs, excess fluid should be removed by an authorized dealer. Uh, well, I don't think any of us are going to go do that. So if you overfill it, uh, the easiest way to get it out is with one of these uh, fluid pumps. Uh, and I really like the kind that has the clear tube. or uh, now would be a good time if you had already installed a drain plug on the transmission pan. And I got to give a shout out to Al from Butler, Butler's Auto Hobbies. He recommends the Dorman plug. It uses an actual bolt and a rubber O-ring. Or a lot of folks are replacing the uh, transmission pan for $26 from Dorman. It comes with a drain plug already on it. Uh, I'm using these uh, D-Rally plugs uh, for nine bucks, uh, but you've got to use Teflon tape on this little uh, bung. And I got to give a huge shout out to Rich from Ford Boss Me. I saw a post where he's going to use this uh, transmission pan. It's made out of cast aluminum and it has some cooling fins and it has an extra two quart capacity. And of course it has a drain plug and this should keep down fluid temperatures if you've got an extreme uh, operating condition and these are going for two hundred fifty two dollars okay so let's uh... 
uh, read this uh, pop quiz question. Uh, transmission dipstick min max capacity is, and in 10 hours, we got 61 votes, and 47 people said one quart, four people said 24 ounces, five people said 16 ounces, five people said eight ounces. And I went looking for a published uh, document uh, with that specification and I couldn't find it. So I've got two examples for you. So back in October of 21 was my last service for my 2010 Grand Marquis and I uh, dropped the pan, I changed the filter, I cleaned the magnet, installed the drain plug and uh, when I got ready to put the fluid in I did my estimation and I underfilled it by one quart and then I hooked up my scan tool and I went driving until I saw uh, 170 degrees and it took me 33 minutes to get it took me 33 minutes of driving at 65 miles an hour to reach 170 degrees on the fluid temperature and ambient temperature was 75 degrees so now that I've satisfied normal operating conditions or normal operating temperature I did my first measurement and it was right here at the minimum or at the 150 degree mark on the transmission dipstick but my fluid temperature is 170 so that means it should have read uh, right here so what I did is I added 8 ounces of fluid I rechecked and it put me right exactly in the middle and then I added another 8 ounces and it got me right to the top of the uh, crosshatch of where it should be at 170 degrees so on my car on that day under those conditions it took exactly 16 ounces to get from the minimum to the maximum of the uh, hot check uh, mark now I realized I had never done a cold check uh, before so what I did is I set out to do a simulated cold check and uh, real quick the whole reason why there's two different temperature ranges on our transmission dipstick is one is a hot check and one is a cold check and um, Im imagine you're a technician at a repair facility and you've just removed a component or you've just made a repair and there's no fluid in there and before you go out and do your test drive you need to make sure you have enough fluid in there so you don't cause any damage so the cold check is a preliminary check uh, just to make sure there's enough fluid in the pan and just to get you going so you can go out driving and do your test drive and then when, once it gets to normal operating temperature then you can do your final accurate hot check so um, I wanted to uh, do the, I wanted to do a simulated cold check and I wanted to see what the minimum and maximum of that cold check uh, mark is so I did this on my 2004 Crown Vic and I did this just a couple of days ago on May 4th and my garage temperature was 64 degrees and outside temperature was 55 degrees Fahrenheit and the first thing I did is I did a uh, I I, I measured the fluid with the engine off and the fluid was all the way up the stick I want to say uh, ha halfway up the stick and it was right here at 53 millimeters above uh, the cold dot and then what I did is I uh, I uh, took my fluid pump I took my fluid pump here and I sucked all the fluid out I out of the uh, filler tube as much as I could and I uh, drained it or I sucked it and I pumped it right into this empty container and I got well you can't see that and I sucked out uh, 2.25 quarts of fluid <clears throat> and here's a sample of what it looks like so I uh, pumped out 2.25 quarts of fluid which is 72 ounces and by coincidence uh, that's divisible by 8 ounces so I made uh, 9 8 ounce servings and I just by pure coincidence I just happened to have 9 empty uh, transmission fluid bottles so I put uh, 8 ounces in each bottle 
and I, I only wanted to do this once and I didn't want to screw it up so in order to get nine equal eight ounce measurements I used this uh, fluid syringe and uh, I really like using this on my small engine equipment because um, when I'm filling those uh, crankcases we're only talking about 90 milliliters which is three ounces so I was able to uh, 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 accurately measure eight ounces in each bottle and I had so I couldn't screw this up so uh, starting uh, so after I removed the 2.25 quarts I dipped my stick and the fluid level was all the way down to here just on the tip which was seven millimeters below the cold mark and so I was ready to add my first eight ounce uh, serving so I added my eight ounce serving and it brought me right to the uh, minimum uh, dot on the cold check and then I added another eight ounce serving and it brought me right into the middle of the cold check and then I added another eight ounce serving and it brought me to the maximum of the cold check so what that tells me from minimum to maximum on the cold check is 16 ounces and um, real quick I want to read this uh, this was the uh, the fifth question uh, but this one didn't do too well because I couldn't figure out how to get it into multiple choice format it was essay format with two photos so I'll never do that again so the question was I showed a picture of the transmission dipstick and the engine dipstick and I said what's the difference and what's the same and this is what I came up with so far the as far as the same they're both sticks they both dip and they both take fluid measurements now this is the difference the transmission the uh, for the transmission dipstick Transmission fluid temperature, ambient temperature, and test drive preconditioning must be considered and is critical for an accurate measurement. And trans the transmission has two separate temperature ranges, cold check before the test drive and a final hot check. And the transmission dipstick has two separate min-max ranges, one for cold, one for hot. And the engine... Uh, the min max capacity for the engine oil dipstick the min max is one quart and the transmission dipstick is 16 ounces for the cold and 16 ounces for the hot okay okay so I think that's pretty much it uh, thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye bye